All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Now, once again, this is going to be another uh, ETT uh, street service. Um, so the spirit, the spirit got on me just a few days ago before I came out, and I, I wanted to speak about um, uh, the topic about hey now. Now at the time we're in, which it, it's almost, believe it or not, man, it's almost 2020 now, man. So, hey, we're we're almost in the end game, man. Okay? The scriptures say, when you see part of the sign come to pass, to know that the, that the time is near, man. All right? So, so, just for example, dealing with the 666 mark in general, right, which we already know what that is. It's the RFID microchip. Okay? Um... You can clearly see if you've been paying attention to the news, you clearly see the chip making its uh, its comeback this year, man. All right, last year was a little quiet. The year before was some talk about it, but now people are starting to talk about it, man. Okay, let me see if I can find that scripture. One of my personal favorites. Short book though, so it might take a second to find. For the book of uh, Habakkuk. It's all right. I'll just quote it off the top of my head just to save a few minutes. Um, Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 2. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and it shall not lie. Okay? Though it, um, let me paraphrase the rest. It says, though it tarry, wait for it, for it will surely come. Right. And, and it will surely come, man. Okay, we've been we've been saying for years. I've been saying for the past four years on YouTube that it was gonna come, man. All right, and and look, it hasn't came yet. But guess what? We still believe it is gonna happen, man. Like, look at the the elders of GMS, man. Elder Tahar been teaching back since 1980s about the the RFID chip, man. And they're still faithfully pushing that out on the streets, man. So that shows you that the Lord's dealing with those brothers, man. All right, another. Uh, Another brother I wanted to give a, uh, a pat on the back to, so to speak, was the brother, um, the mind of God, because he's out there. I believe it's in uh, in Houston, Texas, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, he, he's far away. I, I'm down here in Florida. So that brother, you know, he, he's uh, a ways away, so to speak. All right. But but hey, that brother, you know, now now he's out on the street corners. man, right? And that's good. OK, that's good. However, he needs to get himself a garment though man okay and that's in the scriptures man that's in um that's in the book of uh what is that numbers the 15th chapter man all right and then when you get your garment you got to put uh fringes on the bottom man and the and the uh the border of, of uh of blue okay Yeah, man, we're we're almost we're almost in the end game. Let me see. Let's go ahead and get Isaiah the uh, 13th chapter. Actually, you know what? What about? Isaiah the 47th chapter. And as I said, man, stuff like this, you don't you don't hear this kind of stuff in the Christian church. I'm gonna put my apocrypha down real quick. Alright. Anyway. Let's see. Isaiah 47. There we go, Isaiah 47. All right. Now this, when it mentions Babylon in this this chapter, that's actually referring to America. Okay. A lot of people try to say this is talking about 
uh, ancient Babylon, but that's actually, that's, that's incorrect, okay? This, this didn't happen in ancient Babylon, man. okay? Isaiah chapter 47 and verse 1. Come sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. There is no more throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no longer be called tender and delicate. Take the millstone and grind mill, uncover the lilacs, locks, make bare the leg, uncover the, the thigh, pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be uh, seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Sit thou silent, and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no longer be called the Lady of Kingdoms. I was wrong with my people. I have looted my inheritance and given them unto, into thy hands. Thou didst show them no mercy upon the ancient has thy heavily laid thy yoke. Yeah, now what does the scriptures tell you? The scriptures tell you, he who judges without mercy, he himself shall receive no mercy. So there is no compassion on you Edomites, man. Okay? You're gonna have you're gonna have judgment without mercy, man. Okay? That's why when you read in uh, Revelation um, the second chapter. It says um, that he who overcomes will rule over them with a rod of iron, right? That's why you read in Revelation chapter 13, verse 9 and verse 10, if any man has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity, he must be taken into captivity. He who kills with the sword, he must be killed with the sword. Right, so you, you cops are working for Esau, the so-called white man. You're going to get put into captivity, man, okay? That, that's your judgment. You're going to be put into cages. There's scriptures that mention... When it speaks about the elite of Edom, about them being locked up in a prison, and then after many days they'll be visited. Right? So, hey, man, the Lord isn't gonna, the Lord's not gonna have mercy on you, man. Okay? That's why you have a saying, "You shall weep what you sow," man. And it's true. It's true. There, I mean, there's plenty of real life examples um, to fit that, and that's from the scriptures, man. That's from the scriptures. Okay. Anyway, it says, and thou saidest, I shall be a lady forever, so that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart. Neither didst remember the latter end of it. Therefore, hear now this: Thou that art given to pleasures, that dwells perilously, that says in thy heart, I am none. I or Slaki, I am and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I see the loss of children. Right now, now what does it, what's it talk about when it says dwells carelessly? There's another scripture that says, if I'm not mistaken, that's in Jeremiah the 50th chapter. It says, Thou kingdom that dwells um, with, with pleasures, with with uh, treasure abundantly, thy end is come. Nearly paraphrasing the scripture. Now, what's that talk about? Let's talk about America, man. Okay, because why is that? For example, if you're in the U.S. military, they always boast about how they're the, the, uh, the uh, that the U.S. military is the top nation in the world, the top military in the world. And indeed it is. It even mentions that in Jeremiah, the 50th chapter. It mentions how has the hammer of the whole earth been broken? Okay, so yeah, America is the top nation in the world. That's true. Okay? So... You know, with that being said, you know, how, how do they achieve such power, man? They've gone over to these other nations and they, they raped, they killed, and uh, uh, stolen from these other nations, man. Okay? And even children, too, man. Okay? Which, you know, I'm not going to say innocent because Job chapter 4 verse 7, remember I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent. Right, so nobody who's died was innocent, man. All right, everybody who's ever perished, you know, that's happened for certain reasons, man. Okay, and that's just what the scriptures say, man. All right, so you're gonna find out, man, that a lot of these guys who, um, you know, who are out here teaching these scriptures, they, they really don't know what they're talking about, man. Okay, and it's just a damn fact, man. A lot of these guys ain't know nothing about the scriptures, okay? Just because you go to church on Sunday, that doesn't mean you know what you're talking about, man. No, a so-called Christian pastor, he don't know these scriptures. If that's the case, well, what are the locusts in Revelation in the ninth chapter? 
What's the what's the six 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 mark? What what are the chariots of the Most High? And if they can answer those questions, and then they they might be on the sun. Okay, they I, I might even go to that church and listen to what that guy has to say. But if they don't know the answer to that, what what was it? Three or four questions? Yeah, three questions that I just asked. If you don't know the answer, then hey, you know he he must not know what he's talking about. And I know certain guys. But anyway, let's see. Uh, it says, but these two things shall come unto thee in a moment. In one day, the loss of children and widowhood, they shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast laid nothing, or slaki, thou hast said, none sees me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it has perverted thee. And thou says in thy heart, I am, and there is none else beside me. Right. That, and again, is that not talking about America right there, man? As a matter of fact, just to just to prove, because the scriptures say precept upon precept is how you read the scriptures. Now, remember that it just spoke about enchantments. Now, to prove that's not talking about ancient Babylon, I want to show you something real quick. Okay? So bear with me. All right? Now, remember what we just read about enchantments. Now, let's go to the destruction of Babylon in the last book of the Bible, and let's see what it mentions. Revelation chapter 18, verse 22, And the voice of harpers and musicians and pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman or whatsoever crafty be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee, and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. The voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Let's read that last part again. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by their sorceries were all nations deceived. All right, now let's go back to Isaiah 47 and let's read that part again. Uh, Isaiah chapter 47, verse 9. But these two things shall come unto thee in a moment, in, or in one day. The loss of children and widowhood, they shall come unto thee in their perfection, for the multitude of thy sorceries, and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. For thou hast trusted it in thy wickedness, that thou says, None sees me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge it has perverted thee. And thou hast said in thy heart, I am, and there is none else beside me. Alright? So... So you can clearly see that, that this is talking about America, man. Okay, this and this is coming soon, man. Okay, so that's why I named the video or the, the, the street lesson that we are now in the end game, man. And it's true because this this is this is coming, man. Okay, every day that goes by, that this is this gets closer and closer, man. Okay, and really. Um, see in the news these, these nations are developing nuclear missiles man now if you know anything about the scriptures those nuclear missiles those are that's the lord's armory right there man uh what is it um i believe it's isaiah chapter uh 56 and verse 14 it's been a while since i brought that out so i could be wrong might be 54 and 16 it says for behold i have created the smith who blows the coals in the fire and that brings forth an instrument of his work and i have created a waster to destroy now what's the waster the wasters talk about icbm missiles you read in the scriptures about um it, it mentions flying swords uh, uh arrows it mentions in the apocrypha um about a mighty archer shooting an arrow to the end of the world now what what is that arrow talking about if you read the descriptions it gives in the scriptures you clearly see those are not talking about actual physical you know like wooden arrows let's talk about missiles man. okay might be hard to believe because again you know the christians really don't know that kind of stuff but you know that's why you got to listen to the elders of gms okay because again you have to give respect where it's due brother okay so for that one brother out there the mind of god he's sitting there saying gms are complete masons now you could be correct gms are going off with some things but brother you 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 got to be a fool to sit there and say that they don't know what they're talking about because uh, i mean what what other group out there is teaching the scriptures the way gms is the answer is none okay and you got to admit that you did get majority of the truth from gms it's just a fact that it really can't be argued okay and i speak for myself man all right i've got the, the knowledge of the scriptures from great millstone 
They don't know everything, but the elders and apostles of Great Millstone are worthy of double honors. Okay? So I say it again. Double honors to the, the elders of GMS. All right? They don't got 100% truth, but hey, they are they are worthy of, uh, of, of much respect. Okay? The scriptures tell you, for great men are not always wise, neither do the age understand judgment. Right. And that could go for any of us, man. Okay? But the scriptures also tell you in Romans 13 chapter to give honor and respect to who it is due. Okay? Uh, let's see. Verse 11. Therefore shall evil come unto thee, and thou shalt not know from where it arises, and mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come unto thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Stand now with thine enchantments, and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be that thou shalt be able to profit, if so be thou mayest prevail. Let's see, verse 14. Behold, they shall be as stubble, the fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at, nor fire to sit before. Thus shall they be unto thee with whom thou hast labored, even thy merchants, from thy youth. They shall wander everyone to his quarter. None shall save thee. All right, now I got a side note up there for Nahum, the third chapter. So let's see if I can go ahead and pull Nahum up. Put that down there. Again, this this is this is how you read the scriptures, man. You have to go precept upon precept. Isaiah 28 and verse 10. For precept must be upon precept, here a little and there a little. That's how you get the knowledge of these scriptures. Look at that, man. As I said, the, you know, you gotta let the spirit flow sometimes, man. Because I just I just seen another um, scripture um, pop up that I wanted to get. Which I'll get that. I just want to see if I can get um. What was it? Nahum, which it should be around here. So. Which, if I don't find it, I'll just uh, I'll just go to what I got. It's all right. I'll just I'll just go to what I got because there's a, a few good scriptures I just stumbled across. Okay, it looks like uh. A rainy day out here, man. All right, today I gotta get going. Want to go and be good. All right. Uh, let me see. There's a few good ones in the book of Amos. All right. Matter of fact, let me even pull that up real quick. Uh, Amos, the uh, I believe it's the uh, third chapter. Let me see. Also a good one in Micah chapter 4, verse 1. What's up, buddy? What's up? How you doing, man? Fine. All right, welcome back to that. Um, let's see. come stand out here. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, man. You need water? Yeah, nah, I'm good, man. I brought no? my own stuff, but thank you for uh for the offer. You don't need water? Nah, I'm good, man. I got one right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Have a good day. Hey, you too, man. God bless. Let's see. Uh, Joel, the third chapter, and I'm going to read to, um, I'm going to read to verse 18. Okay, it says, uh, Joel chapter 3, verse 1. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I shall, uh, shall uh, bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all the people down the valley of Jehoshaphat. They will lead them. Oh, there's a lot going on. 
they will cleave with them there for my people and for their heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Let's stop there for a second, Matt. What, what is that talking about? Okay, what's, what's that talking about? We, we the, 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 the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, we've been scattered throughout all nations of the world, man. Okay? So that's why you're going to have brothers who look like me, or the brother who just drove up to me. That brother, he was an Israelite. If I'm not mistaken, he was a Jew, though. Okay? That brother, hey, you know, that brother, he's a, he's a Jew, man. Okay? Um, but yeah, man, we've been scattered throughout all nations of the world. Okay? And that was done as a curse. That's in the book of, uh, uh, what is it? Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, man. Okay? It says, they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they may drink. Right, now what is that talking about? When we were taken over to this land, okay, back in the slave trade, when we were taken from Africa to America, what they would do is, as it just says, they would, they would sell, you know, so-called Negroes for either merchandise, wine, or really anything, man, okay? There's a, there's a few places where they got that going on today, but, you know, it happened. It happened. All right? Let's see. I don't think we need to get all of it. It's not a... Uh... Matter of fact, let me... Got something I want to get. Actually, it's in Matthew. I'm sitting on that I want to get um, but I want to mention this real quick because I told the mind of God if you read uh, what is it Matthew the 24th chapter when well, we both agreed on this okay but when the Lord returns it's gonna be an average day man, okay yeah you know Jacob's trouble that that's gonna happen but when the Lord makes his final return the world is not gonna be in all chaos man. that's going on and how can I prove that the scriptures say, as in the days of Noah, so shall also be in the coming of the Son of Man. What were they doing when Noah entered the ark? They were in the marketplaces, buying, selling, having a good time. How's that going to happen if martial law is declared, man? How's that going to happen? The answer is it's not, okay? Matthew chapter 24 and the verse, I'll start at verse 36. But of that day and hour knows no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, Joshua also the coming of Son of Man be. For as in, in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Right. So, of that scripture, we clearly see when Yahweh Shai returns, it's not going to be all crazy out here. People are going to be gunning people down on the streets. Martial law is going to be declared. That, that's going on, man. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, the tribulation is going to happen before the Lord returns, okay? Because the Lord returns at the end of the tribulation, okay? Which we're already in the tribulation, okay? That's, again, going back to the name of the video. We're, we're, we're now in the end game. And it's true, we are. We are in the end game, and we have been for a while, man. Okay, because half of Revelation's already happened. There's only a few prophecies that are left to happen. And the only one prophecy that has to happen before the Lord returns is the mark of the beast. If that does not happen, sweet Jesus is not returning. And it's a fact, it's not going to happen. Okay, so Jesus is not going to return until majority of the planet Earth, or I should say the plane, okay, because I know mind of God will get on me for that. Until majority of people are microchipped, the Lord is not going to return. And that's what the Bible says, okay? And if you disagree with that one, and you show me in the scriptures where it says the Lord will return two times, it's not in there, okay? There's one return, okay? In fact, I believe it's even in, uh... yeah, you know what? It's li <laughs> LOL, look at that. It's, it's literally on the same page I'm reading. Let, let's get that real quick. Matthew chapter 24, verse 30. And then shall the, appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then, hold on. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. 
and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds uh, from one end of heaven to the other. Okay, so, so going off that, brother, we clearly see that the Lord is going to return first, then the, uh, the chariots are going to save the, the children of Israel, okay? And that's just what the scriptures say, man. Okay? Go back to Joel chapter 2. Or actually, was it Joel? Oh, it was Joel the second chapter, not the third chapter. Slucky about that. Let me go ahead and read this. This is a good man. This is a parable about those missiles. Joel chapter 2 and verse 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahweh comes. It is nigh at hand, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. There have never been ever the light, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoured before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Now that goes back, if you know the scriptures, that goes back to um, the book of Revelation chapter 9, okay, where John describes the missiles. He called them horsemen. Why? Because, again, that was a man from, uh, from 2,000 years ago having a dream of the world a few thousand years in the, in the, in the future. So when he seen technology, he didn't know what that was. Just like when he seen the, the locusts. Those were really World War I fighter jets, man. Okay? And that, that prophecy already happened. Okay? But, but it just shows you that he had to describe it that way because he didn't know what that was. And I agree with his breakdown because if you see one of those things flying today and he didn't know what that was, if he didn't know that planes existed, what would you say that's talking about? You'd obviously say that's talking about some type of bug or something, man. Especially, you know, since they go miles and miles up. You know, they look like little little, little insects from from, uh, from down here where we are, man. Okay? Anyway, the appearance of them is the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so should they run. Like the noise of chariots on the top of mountains, should they leap. The noise of a flame of fire that devours the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Behold their face, before their face the people shall be much pain. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march everyone on his ways, and they shall not break the ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his paths, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city, and they shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the window like a thief. The earth shall quake before them, and the heavens fall on. The heavens shall tremble, and the sun and moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. All right? Um, okay, hold on. Okay. There is a good point to come up again. It's going to get a little windy. Uh, my recorder is going to shut off in just a, a few minutes here. Uh, I want to see if I could get Zachariah. There we go. Uh, chapter 14 and verse 12. All right. Now, now listen to this. Now, if you read, I don't know if I'll get it for the sake of time, but if you read uh, the book of, I believe it's 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10, go read that and then come back and read this scripture and tell me what this is talking about. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 12. And this shall be the plague wherein the Lord shall smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away their holes, and their tongue shall consume away within their mouths. Now, what does that talk about? That's talking about nuclear missiles, man. And it's just, it's just a fact. What else, what else can that be talking about? Okay? So, I mean, <laughs> you guys, you know, and again, you, the Christian pastor isn't going to know that stuff, man, because he, he really hasn't done research into this. Okay? But anyway... 
I'm going to uh, to call that the lesson there. Um, anyway, I want to end off by giving all praises unto Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. But in the real, in the ancient pillar of Hebrew, the name of the Father is Yahweh, the name of the Son is Yahweh Shai. But anyway, with that being said, I want to say shalom.